While not a common practice, some cereal growers may use land rolling to ease harvest by pushing rocks down into the earth and thereby reducing the risk of equipment damage. However, rolling should occur at the proper stage to reduce soil issues and damage to the crop. While land rolling within a couple days after seeding is likely to cause the least amount of crop damage, it can pulverize soil, increasing the risk of soil erosion, and creating crusting issues that interfere with crop emergence. Land rolling when the crop is just emerging is not ideal either, as this can potentially interfere with the emergence by damaging the coleoptile. Cereals should be rolled at the two to three leaf stage. Early morning rolling should be avoided as turgid plants are more easily broken and dewy mornings can spread disease. Ideally, plants should be rolled in the heat of the day when soils are dry to avoid uprooting plants and when wilted plants are less likely to be broken. In general, rolling after the three to four leaf stage is considered late and should be avoided. Studies from Farming Smarter out of Lethbridge have focused on barley. They determined that a one to three leaf stage for barley would be the optimum rolling window to maximize yield and minimize soil erosion, while rolling late at the first node stage did not significantly reduce yield in their study, it did significantly reduce grain protein and lower 1000 kernel weight. Rolling at this stage also caused noticeable stress to the plant and resulted in a 10 centimeter reduction in plant height. Ourselves and Warwick conducted a study on barley, grain, and silage that documented more detrimental effects from rolling than the Farming Smarter study did. At Scott, rolling at the first node stage significantly reduced plant height by 6 centimeters. At Scott and Yorkton, there was a significant reduction in forage yield as rolling was delayed to the first node. In contrast, a significant reduction in grain yield was not observed at either site but yield did trend lower at Scott as rolling was delayed. While rolling at the first node stage did not affect yield at Yorkton, a significant reduction in grain protein was observed. I'm not sure why. So this trial is an expansion of our past work, but the study is focusing on wheat. Unlike earlier work described here, this study will determine the impact of crop stage and time of day has on the spread of leaf disease from rolling wheat. Anyway, let's dive into the results for all the locations. I particularly want to see how the yield was affected. So this trial was conducted at Yorkton by the East Central Research Foundation and Suncrest College, at Scott by the Western Applied Research Corporation, and at Melfort by the Northeast Agriculture Research Foundation. Here's the treatment list. We have the unrolled check for comparison against all the rolling treatments. Then we roll either one to three days post seed, at the two to three leaf stage, or at the first node stage. When rolling occurred at the two to three leaf stage, or the first node stage, we also compared the impact of rolling in the early dewy morning or in the mid-afternoon heat. At Yorkton, rolling didn't significantly affect the height of the wheat. In contrast, rolling late at the first node stage significantly reduced crop height by about 6 centimeters at Melfort and at Scott. For lodging, there were no significant interactions with site, so we can look at the effect of rolling averaged over sites. Despite the height reduction, rolling at the first node stage still significantly increased lodging. Perhaps late rolling resulted in more lodging by weakening stem development at a critical stage. In the literature, rolling has been associated with increased levels of leaf disease, particularly if the crop is covered in dew during the operation. However, this phenomenon was only observed at Scott when rolling occurred late at the first node stage. While not statistically significant, there was a trend for the disease to be worse when rolling occurred in the morning. At Melfort, rolling had no significant effect on the leaf disease development. At Yorkton, we had the exact opposite of expectations. Leaf disease ratings were significantly higher for the unrolled check. In an attempt to explain this, 
Our ratings may have also included leaf senescence, which develops naturally as the crop matures. The unrolled check may have had more abiotic leaf senescence relative to the rolled treatments, as rolling may have delayed maturity. At Yorkton, we did take maturity ratings. While rolling at the first node stage did significantly delay maturity by three days, we did not observe a delay in maturity with the other roll timings. So, in the end, it's hard to say what's going on here. When averaged across site, only rolling late at the first node stage significantly reduced yield. We were hoping to show that rolling in mid-afternoon would provide the least amount of damage and the greatest yield, but there was little evidence to support this in our study. I won't show you the grain protein results as they didn't vary much and there were no significant differences. Conclusions. Rolling late at the first node stage was not a good plan. When we did this, we observed increased lodging, increased leaf disease at Scott, and decreased yield. Rolling in the afternoon, heat did not demonstrate, as we had hoped, reduced leaf disease, nor did it affect lodging or yield. Best results were obtained when rolling one to three days post-seed or at the two to three leaf stage. But be careful when rolling early. Rolling during early crop emergence could break the coleoptiles, and rolling could reduce emergence caused by crusting on low organic matter soils.